What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are building a computer, if you couldn't tell from all the hardware lying around me, uh, but there is a purpose for it. We're not just doing this for shits and gigs, although I like to do that sometimes. Uh, what we're essentially building a PC for today is to test a single component, and that is this thing right here. This is the power combo from Fantex, and uh, I did check this out at CES back in January, and I thought it was really cool because it's really the first of its kind that I've seen. And what it essentially allows you to do is connect two power supplies to a single motherboard in, in a single system. So uh, that's basically for redundancy. In the event of a power failure, let's say one of your power supplies dies, your system can continue running. What's going on in the background? Okay, monitor's just turned off, don't mind that. So in case of a power failure and one of your units dies, your system will continue running uh, because it's backed up essentially by a second connected power supply. So just kind of the same reason more or less why you would have a RAID 1 setup for your hard drives for example. Just for that uh, peace of mind, redundancy, uh, you know, instead of data loss recovery, uh, you're essentially recovering power uh, in this situation. So that's going to be kind of cool to test out, and we're not going to be able to test it out really until we build the system. Uh, so that's why we're doing it today. Speaking of the power supplies that we're using, we've got a G750M from Cooler Master and an EarthWatts Platinum uh, 650 watt from Antec. Notice that they are two different wattages, and you can have two different wattages when connecting to the power combo. They don't need to be identical. However, each power supply needs to be powerful enough and have enough wattage to drive your entire system by itself. Otherwise, it's kind of a moot point to have one for backup. Uh, additionally, we've got a cooler here. I guess I'll just go in no particular order. Uh, we've got the Fantex PHTC14PE. This is an awesome air cooler. Again, we're going for high reliability for the system, so I didn't want to mess around with any liquid uh, or you know water cooling, things like that. So no chance of leaking here, but this is a pretty awesome cooler. It's very silent as well. We've got a GTX 980 Ti right here from Zotac. This is their Amp Edition uh, killer card, uh, beast of a card. It's definitely going to be, um, you know, power efficient enough to be driven by either of these power supplies, so that's good. We've got a 6700K uh, from, from Intel, of course, Core i7, so we are going Skylake for this. Now, I could have gone X99, however, I wanted to save that for Broadwell E when that comes out, because X99, uh, as of now, um, or Haswell E, I should say, is kind of, you know, being phased out for Broadwell E coming up really soon, so that, that's going to be for a later video, so stay tuned for that, uh, but I'm pretty sure we're still going to get some decent performance here with Skylake. Uh, we've also got 30 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum uh, th at 3000 megahertz. However, I've only got a 16 gig kit right now. There's actually another 16 gig kit on its way right now um, from Amazon, so I'll be installing that kit when it gets here. Uh, we've also got two SSDs for our storage. We've got a boot drive for our uh, for our system, the 850 Evo SSD, uh, which is uh, 250 gigs, as well as a one terabyte MX200 from Crucial. And this is gonna be where all of our raw files ideally will be edited off of. So let's say we're doing a video editing system here. Um, it's really much nicer to, to edit off of an SSD than a mechanical hard drive. You won't get nearly as many drop frames and things like that. We've also got two mechanical hard drives though, speaking of which, uh, just for uh, backup, for example, we've got two two terabyte WD blacks, and those are going to be put in a RAID 1 array for extra redundancy goodness. And I think finally we've got, no, no, we've got the case, which uh, the case is very, very important because this, uh, this is the Enthu Primo. Um, from Fantex, of course, and it does support two power supplies. So that's, there's really not many cases out there that do that. Uh, however, you are probably gonna want a case that does so if you are gonna be using a power combo. And there is ample room in here to mount the power combo as well. So uh, it kind of just made sense if you're going with kind of a niche product like the power combo to actually get a case from the same manufacturer so you know everything is compatible. Um, other than that, excellent case, great airflow, tons of mounting options, obviously. Uh, and then finally, we've got this workstation board from ASUS. This is the Z170WS, and this is just a beast of a board. It's got tons of connectivity options, and uh, while, it, while it is really tailored for workstation applications like rendering uh, and things like that, streaming, um, it is really good for gaming as well. You can see it's got four PCIe by 16 slots, Gen 3, of course, and it does support up to four-way SLI or Crossfire, so that's pretty nice. You've also got two M.2 PCIe NVMe slots, that is by four, and uh, you also have a U.2 connector right here by your SATA ports. Of course, your USB 3.1 Type A and Type C connectors on the rear I.O. and uh, just just coated in a beautiful aesthetic overall. So those are all the parts. I know I kind of rushed through it, but I just want to get this thing built really quickly because I'm super excited about it. And, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and test this power combo, as I mentioned earlier. So why don't we go ahead and do that now?
All right, y'all, so the build is finally complete. Here she is in all of her glory. And here we have her running uh, Unigen Heaven 4.0 in the background. Everything's looking good. Vitals, thermals, everything's checking out, so that's a good sign. Uh, we have a good boot so far. Um, however, if you were paying close attention to the time lapse, you might have noticed one or two different snags that I encountered during the build process. The first of which, uh, which happened early on, was noticing or realizing that the CPU cooler I picked out initially was way too big to actually clear our RAM here. Uh, so we were running into some RAM clearance issues. That was just a huge oversight on my part. So what we ended up doing, or what I ended up doing, was downsizing to a smaller Fantex cooler, the PHTC12DX, which has uh, two 120 millimeter fans and a single heatsink tower. And that seems to be working out just fine. The second thing that, that I overlooked was was how freaking large this case is. The N3 Primo is just a behemoth of a case and I haven't built in a full tower for quite some time. So what I overlooked and what I completely didn't think of is having a cable that would route all the way from the power combo, which is mounted at the very front at the bottom of the case to the eight pin EPS connector on the motherboard. Uh, so what I ended up having to do was actually take two eight pin extensions and link them together. It's the first time I've ever really had to do that. And thank God I had two of them on hand. Otherwise, I don't know what I would I, I would have done. I probably would have had to take the, the power combo and physically move it closer to the eight pin and do some kind of nasty routing where I had to like Run, run the cable over the video card or something like that. So I'm glad I didn't have to do that. It all worked out in the end. Uh, however, what we're here to discuss is the power combo. Um, so right now we've got both power supplies that are pooling their resources essentially to drive the system. Now let's see what happens when I unplug one of the power supplies from, from our rig here. This is, it's, it's still scary, even though I know it's gonna be fine. It's, it scares, it scares me. Ha ha ha! Okay, so we just unplugged the G G750M, um, and it's completely normal. Nothing, nothing's changed. There was not, not even any like flinching or like flickering or anything like that. I've even checked GPU Z and monitored the uh, GPU load, um, and uh, so far nothing. I mean, it's still at 99%. You unplug it, and it, it doesn't even flinch. So that's a really good thing. Uh, now we can go ahead and plug this back in. Now you shouldn't do this. You should power off the system before you plug a power supply back in. If if you're in this kind of situation. Sorry for the ambient noise. Go ahead and plug this back in. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the other power supply. Now this is the power supply that is um, actually the one powering the, uh, the graphics card because the power combo, um, you're only plugging in your eight pin EPS as well as your 24 pin cables from each from each unit. Uh, however, SATA and PCIe are connected directly from uh, one of the power supplies to, to your drives and, and video card. And it doesn't matter, you can you can mix and match here. So you could actually have one power supply powering your, your GPU and the other one powering your drives or vice versa. So let's go ahead and unplug the one that uh, is, is powering our video card. I believe the drives are powered on the 750M. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this. And Unigen Heaven 4.0 is still running strong. All right, guys, so what we've just witnessed is that you can essentially yank out the AC cord from either power supply with little to no effect on your system's overall performance. We didn't see any kind of CPU or GPU droopage, which is pretty awesome. And to, to validate that point even further, I actually ran some benchmarks on this system in Unigen Heaven 4.0. And what I found was whether, whether I was just running the system and, and not touching it with both power supplies plugged in or yanking out the power supply midway through, it didn't matter which one, uh, the frame rate was consistent across the board. So um, it's actually kind of funny. I scored three frames per second on average uh, higher when I was yanking out the power supplies as opposed to just letting the system go. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna start yanking out the AC cord when I'm, when I'm in mid game to give me a little bit of a performance boost. Uh, but that's pretty much it guys. And this shows that uh, the power combo really does work. Nifty little gadget here from Fantex. So uh, be sure to let me know what you think of it in the comments below if you have any use for it yourself or if you can see yourself um, utilizing it in a different way. Uh, but that's all for now, guys. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. And until next time, I'll see y'all in the next video.